Joining me here today is Mr. V. Murli Dharan, BJP's Artingal constituency candidate. Mr. Murli Dharan, it, has, it is a tough fight here in Artingal constituency. You are taking on sitting MP of the Congress, Adur Prakash, and a sitting MLA from the CPIM, Mr. V. Joy. How are you seeing this competition and what do you think will be your advantages in Artingal constituency? See, this uh, contest in uh, Artingal, of course, is a tri cornered contest. It is not individuals who are fighting. It's ultimately the parties, their uh, policies, their approaches, their achievements. All these are the uh, various aspects that will come into play. And in this, my biggest advantage is the last 10 years uh, good governance of Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji and the fact that the government is again coming back. Prime Minister Modi will be forming his third government once the results are out. So naturally people uh, know that uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji is going to continue as the Prime Minister and it will be always beneficial to have an MP who is part of the team of Prime Minister Narendra Modi. You talk about the development work by the Modi government and um, that you will be able to contribute to it. But what is your specific vision or your plan uh, for Artingal? Uh, what is it that you can tell us at the point? See, there are, this constituency is a... Uh, is one which I won't say that it has one specific point of issues. We have the coastal uh, belt, we have the agricultural belt, we have the traditional artisans and uh, such people and we have the uh, hilly areas. Of course the tribals, the scheduled caste communities, it's a, it's a mix of all these things and their issues are also different. See, uh, for example, if I say uh, the coastal area, in the coastal area, people have been protesting against the uh, various governments or their actions that they have undertaken, especially in places like Udalapuri which was not to the, uh, means whatever was done was not by taking into confidence the local community. From there, if you go to the entire coastline, there are multiple such issues, one. Second, this area was considered to be uh, within Trivandrum district or in the southern part of Kerala, an area which uh, enjoins Kollam, which was the center of cashew industry. So we have a lot of cashew industries and factories also. We have coir industries. But they are all now in a very, very bad shape. Infrastructure, there are the roads problem is there. Water is a, drinking water is a very serious issue. Even in the, yesterday I visited two scheduled caste colonies in uh, municipality of Nedubangad. <coughs> People have to walk three to four minutes, two to three kilometers carrying water on their shoulders. They don't have even a drop of water to drink. Such issues are there. So, skill development, employment, the agricultural field, all these is areas, there are a lot of issues which have not been addressed by the governments which were ruling the state or the uh, members of this area who represented them in the parliament. Now, what your opponents are saying is that you have been a minister with the central government, minister of state. So, what have you done for the people of Artingel, for the people of Kerala? See, if you look at that, uh, these MPs and MLAs personally have approached me. If they are not doing anything, why would they approach me? See, I have been a minister in the uh, 
Ministry of External Affairs. As Minister of External Affairs, my work has been the welfare of the expatriates. And there are hundreds and hundreds of examples during the COVID, during Ukraine, during uh, Sudan, uh, all these areas. Even the latest, the conflict in Israel. And now the latest, Russia. Russia. This is one part. Second is the railways, the roads, agriculture. See, there are the farmer produce organizations that has been formed. Now, the very recently, we have initiated the formation of 1,000 micro-enterprises within the, this constituency. Basically, this constituency may be spilling over to Trivandrum constituency also. Out of which 300 such enterprises, the loans have been given. The finance minister came to the only constituency where the finance minister came during the last, maybe during all these years, and distributed 6,000 crore worth financial services. This article, MP didn't care to even attend that program. So, I, I need not enumerate. Whatever has been done by Narendra Modi government, I was part of that. And any others who say that we did it, their, their contribution was only giving a representation. What was executed, it is the Prime Minister's, Narendra Modi's government's effort. And this government is a whole of government approach. We have that. So whatever happens, in that it could be minor, major role for a minister who hails from this state. You have been a Minister of State in the Ministry of External Affairs. In Kerala, it has a huge impact in the state because we have a lot of expatriates in different parts and especially in the Gulf regions. And you have been working closely in these areas also. So, uh, you have any plans for them and uh, what has your experience been? See, uh, those who go from here, uh, they go because the employment opportunities are very little in Kerala. So we need to provide employment opportunities and for that skill development is required. If they are skill trained, they have better skills, they stand good even in the, not only in the local market but in the global job market. So how we can provide that is one aspect that uh, I have already started addressing. I propose to take it further ahead if the people of this area gives me their mandate, one. Second thing is the welfare of the expatriates. What happens in Kerala is the, those who go abroad, they go there, they work there, they send the earnings back home, but it's only for the livelihood. Those people who go there, ultimately they all come back, but after they come back, their rehabilitation, their settlement is a major issue. The state government should initiate some action, some plan, where these people who are working there, their skill upgradation has to be done. And then they come back, naturally they can smoothly settle into a system that they have created or the, with the help of the government or on their own, so that after they come back, say after 10 years in somewhere abroad or 15 years somewhere abroad, they need not be in a position where again they are searching for a job at the age of 45 and 50. Sir, now um, you have uh, been here in the Artingal constituency for quite some time. Uh, in the past, uh, there has been a lot of uh, uh, criticism coming in from the left front, uh, mainly the CPIM and even the CM. When it comes to matters of Kerala, of the state, you are not representing the interest of the state. You are, uh, indeed, uh, there were even comments that you are trying to sabotage uh, the development of the state or whatever the state requires. You're not working for it, you're actually working against the state. See, this is the narrative that the CPM wants to create because they fear that what I am doing will benefit BJP. 
what the government does. So that way they always say that uh, the government of India also is trying to sabotage the Kerala. So their narrative is a politically oriented, uh, politically motivated. When Kerala government tries to takes over, take over the land of the people, I have to protect them. So when I have to protect them, it goes against the political interests of CPM. So whatever is against the political interests of CPM, CPM right from the first day, they started this narrative that Murli Dharan is going to get the, he is having the Ministry of External Affairs and uh, uh, the Ministry, especially the welfare of the expatriates. So we should create a narrative where we can say it is against Kerala. It is against the political interests of CPM that I am, I am working for the people of Kerala, not for the government of Kerala. Government of Kerala, when they implement K-Rail, I protested. So I tried to have Vande Bharat and we got it, two Vande Bharats. So is it not welfare? Bringing back the people who are in jails, bringing back people from Ukraine, are they not for the people of Kerala? So all this Kerala, the CPM has an overwhelming presence in every sector. I appreciate them for that. But this has been done by hook or crook. And unfortunately, Kerala didn't have anybody to oppose that, expose that. So I am trying to expose them. So they find it in an embarrassing situation. So they try to paint me anti-Kerala. I am for a development, they are for not for development. The financial crisis of the state, what the state government and the CPIM, the left front has been saying is that our major problem is because the centre is not giving us our funds that we rightfully deserve. How would you react on this? See, there is no point in debating that now because the issue is in the court. The court has not given any favourable verdict for the government of Kerala. And the Kerala government had to even plead that the arguments of the government of India should not go to the press. Kapil Sibyl said that don't allow the uh, statement by the uh, union ministries or the union government's council leak to the media. So that what does it mean? It means that Government of Kerala's arguments which they have been putting before the public, that doesn't stand good. The Government of India's arguments have got more uh, relevance. And what exactly transpired in the Supreme Court also is something very interesting. Because the Kerala government has been saying that 57,000 crores, 54,000 crores. But when it went to the Supreme Court, there was no mention of 57,000 and 54,000. And the court refused to buy the argument. Court ultimately said, give a bailout package. What is bailout package? Bailout package is a solace. It is not uh, something that the state, government of India has been uh, unreasonably or unnecessarily uh, withholding the what is due but help them. The so that is why I would say this argument is over now. Even now they are persisting, trying to say that we, did this, we, 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 are, we are being subjected to all this. The, the finance minister has replied it on the floor of the parliament. Not a single MP from Kerala of the left asked this question. Why didn't they ask this question in the parliament? They could have cornered the finance minister. But questions were asked in the parliament. Questions were this. asked about 3,000 crores. See, 750 crores which is due for the UGC scale. What is the state, what is the narrative that is being built? 750 crores we were denied. What is the fact? Fact is state government had to implement that scheme, pay that amount and then get it reimbursed. State government didn't do that. When it comes to these clauses, what the state says is that 
unnecessarily new guidelines are added new clauses are added and as far as a life mission also concerned they wanted the branding of or uh, the uh, prime minister's uh, uh, logo or uh, that it was done uh, by the prime minister even though only uh, a, a very small percentage comes that and the government didn't want to have any kind of branding because they See, believe this, so these this, are the this, this argument itself falls flat because when you say that only a small percentage comes from center and because of that uh, it it doesn't help us in any way then you when you when it gets stopped you say that central funds is the reason not coming central funds not coming there is if it is a small percent then why should it affect it should not affect if it is a major amount is from kerala then it could have been implemented one one yeah. second all these arguments why are no you not taking it to the supreme court if government of india is doing something unlawful take it to the court you challenge na uh, but kerala government challenged we will go to the court when central government offered them see this is uh, some amount that is that had to be repaid we will postpone it we will postpone it some 4500 no 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 we will not accept that we will go to the court but nothing happened why did you go to the court why did you question this in the court so in this particular case of like everything mission, you go to supreme court these arguments you do, you put it before the public only because public can be misled no, but in this particular matter life mission case had said that when 4 lakh is given only less than a lakh comes from the center hmm. uh, the rest is given by the state government right. and they not giving that money because of the uh, i mean the branding is one of the issues is what uh, they had come out and that said if it is unlawful it is a part it is a see the money that is spent is passed by the parliament and when that is passed the government of india has a role in that that needs to be known to the public what why 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 do they want to hide it no the the logic was that people deserve their right for of course, a house so there is government no need for also, any kind what of the state uh, government gives no 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 state government does also is a right it is not state government's uh, uh, charity yeah th that's what they don't want huh. any logo anybody's logo is what uh, they then had then why 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 life and all these logos are being put in front of houses well, everywhere houses. everywhere why see during covid why was the chief minister's photo and logo put on the kits that were distributed okay so see why is national highways having the chief ministers and the pwd ministers uh, flux boats why is the smart uh, the city finances that is provided and on that basis the multi level parking that is done that is having a logo of the state government so see all these things are combined efforts so what government of india is asking is put it as a combined effort don't claim what uh, for what the government of india is doing it is the people's right the money that state government gives also is people's right it's not that only central government's money is people's right it is state government and what is state government's money in devolution 41% is provided by the central only it is the rule it is the law it is the act and government of india is not doing anything unlawful now the other uh, narrative or what the cpm as well as the congress is saying is that agencies are being used be it the ed the income tax agencies are being used against the opposition leaders against the opposition political parties just ahead of elections not making it a, a fair play putting the opposition at a disadvantage who did it kejriwal could have gone to the uh, accepted the summons of the ed months ago he brought it close to the election 10 times kejriwal didn't respond to ed summons even before the elections 3 months ago he could have gone and finished the whole issue so kejriwal was forcing the enforcement agencies so that he feels that he can gain sympathy but i would like to remind his chief deputy chief minister is in jail without getting a bail for 13 months why would the court do that if there is nothing uh, uh, prima facie in that
So, and why did Kejriwal withdraw that uh, policy when the Lieutenant Governor initiated the enquiry in some investigations and enquiries? So, that means he had something to hide. So, election cannot be a ruse for indulging in corruption. You indulge in corruption, you indulge in criminal uh, matters, offenses, and then you say that election is coming, don't touch me. Now, the Chief Minister's daughter, why is the Chief Minister not explaining what was the service provided? It is a simple, very simple question. What was the service provided for getting so much money? Unable to answer that question. It is a very simple layman's question. I am not asking any legal question. I am not asking any enforcement director's question. I am not asking any question, financial question. I am asking, see, I got 3 crores, 9 crores, 7 crores, whatever is the amount. For what? Chief Minister says that two companies and I had an agreement to provide what? And why KSITC became party to that? And when such things happen, should the enforcement agencies also be part of the model code of conduct that next three months, anybody can do anything, no questions will be asked. You kill me, nobody will ask question. You attack me, nothing will happen. So, violence will have it, corruption. So, those who are corrupt, see, if they plead, they are not corrupt. The court is there. So, what they say is, we are corrupt, but don't touch us because we are opposition. That cannot be, no? We do, we have the right to indulge in corrupt practices, but don't touch us because we are opposition. Are we a holy cow? This opposition. It's not there also. They also have to be part of the, the, the law of the land, the constitution, everything is binding on them. Congress has now come out and said last night they got an income tax notice which says that about 1,800 uh, crores need to be paid. Um, and they say that uh, the same is not, uh, it is not the same standard for the BJP but it's for them. So they're saying that uh, the government is uh, acting against a principal opposition party in the country and making sure that they are unable to uh, contest these elections at a level playing field. See, election commission is there. The court is there. If there is something unlawful that is happening, they can always approach the court. If Congress party has complied with all the regulations, all the acts, nobody will dare to question them. That means again the same question is, I do this but uh, because I am an opposition party and election is coming, don't ask me questions. So, see, there is a court, na? and court has struck down whatever uh, court felt that it is, uh, in their view, fair, unfair, electoral bonds, they decided. So, when electoral bonds come, you say that BJP is at a, uh, <laughs> BJP has uh, committed something wrong, but when this happens, then, then what, what, the law applies to different people at different uh, parameters? It cannot be, no? Before I let you go, what do you have to tell the people of Artingal? See, I would like to tell them that Artingal requires lot of development. There is a lot to be done. And during the last so many years, unfortunately, even those who were part of government, didn't do what was required for the people. Of course, as an opposition MP, I can only say that opposition MPs have their own uh, constraints, I will say, because he doesn't want to be too much associated with the government, maybe. So, this election is going to be an election where Prime Minister Narendra Modi's government is, will be taking oath again. And for the development of Artingal, it will be always better to have an MP who is supporting the government instead of an MP who doesn't want to implement the policies of the government. Thank you so much, Mr. Murtidharan, for speaking to us Thank and you. all the best.